Flight 11 is right around the corner. Confidence is higher than ever following the success of Flight 10, especially with the booster landing. That confidence has only grown stronger because SpaceX recently released onboard data from the B-16 landing, which shows that the landing was even more successful than initially expected. This new information provides an extra layer of assurance as we look ahead to the booster landing attempt on Flight 11. So, just how successful was the Flight 10 booster landing, and how will that achievement positively influence Flight 11 and the future of Starship? Let's find out together on today's episode of Great SpaceX. We're all waiting for Flight 11 with great anticipation, eager to see how it'll unfold and whether it will add another success to SpaceX's growing record. Among the many objectives of this mission, the booster landing stands out as one of the most closely watched elements. It's not only a critical part of validating the reusability of Super Heavy, but also a key opportunity for testing. This flight will feature adjustments to the landing burn sequence and may even involve a higher landing angle to explore ways of optimizing future performance. All of this builds upon the foundation established by the remarkable achievements of Flight 10. Looking back at the booster's journey during Flight 10, most steps went smoothly. However, there were two noticeable issues. First, one of the engines in the middle ring failed during ascent and could not be restarted later. Second, the booster appeared to explode earlier than intended, before it was fully submerged in the sea. Even with these setbacks, the flight was considered highly successful, and in fact, it provided SpaceX with data that exceeded expectations. At the American Astronautical Society's Glenn Space Technology Symposium on September 8th, Bill Gerstenmayer, SpaceX's VP of Build and Flight Reliability, shared an important insight. He revealed that the company had obtained critical flight data, showing greater stability than either computational fluid dynamics models or wind tunnel testing had predicted. This was an extraordinary confirmation of Starship's capability and a sign that the system is outperforming some of the most trusted predictive tools in aerospace engineering. To understand why this is significant, it's useful to briefly examine the testing methods Gersten Mayer referred to. A wind tunnel test involves placing a rocket or model in a controlled tunnel where strong air currents simulate flight conditions. Engineers measure how the airflow interacts with the rocket's shape, which helps them refine designs and prepare for real-world conditions. CFD modeling, on the other hand, uses advanced mathematics, physics, and computer simulations to predict how fluids like air will flow around the rocket. These models provide insight into pressures, stresses, and aerodynamic stability without requiring physical tests for every condition. Both methods are essential for rocket development, but they remain simulations. They can't fully replicate real-world conditions, although they can come close. This is why real flight data is so valuable. Flight 10 proved that Starship's stability in actual flight exceeded even the most optimistic results predicted by wind tunnel tests and CFD models. This breakthrough is one of the hidden victories of Flight 10. While viewers could only watch the rocket rise and land, SpaceX engineers were gathering invaluable data about aerodynamics, stability, and structural performance. Much of this information is still being analyzed, particularly factors like angle of attack, controllability, and how aerodynamic forces shift during ascent and descent. As new details are released, they will serve as the foundation for improvements in upcoming missions. The immediate impact of these findings will be seen on Flight 11. Since this will be the final mission using the V-2 configuration, its booster, B-15, will share many similarities with the Flight 10 booster, B-16. This makes it easier for SpaceX to implement lessons learned and apply upgrades directly. More importantly, it gives them the confidence to attempt riskier tests, including the new landing burn sequence designed to prepare for the V-3 booster. Another factor raising the stakes is that B-15 is a reused booster. About three-quarters of its engines have already flown, making this mission an important test of reliability and refurbishment practices. The success of Flight 10 gives SpaceX a stronger foundation for trusting these reused engines, but it also places a spotlight on engine stability. Avoiding failures like the one that occurred on Flight 10 will be critical for the boost back and landing burn, as well as the overall mission outcome. Flight 11 may also test a steeper angle of attack during descent, subjecting the booster to even greater aerodynamic challenges. This will require structural reinforcements and precise control, but if it succeeds, it'll mark another step forward in preparing Starship for the more demanding flights of the future. 
Beyond Flight 11, the lessons from B-16's success will influence the development of the V-3 booster, which represents the most significant redesign of Super Heavy so far. The forward section will include a completely reworked hot staging system optimized for performance, production, and reuse. The grid fins will be redesigned in both shape and size, integrated with catching points to support Mechazilla recovery. The propulsion system will undergo its most dramatic upgrade in the introduction of the Raptor 3 engine. This new engine is designed for simplicity, improved thrust, and easier refurbishment, making it a cornerstone of SpaceX's push for rapid reusability. It'll also play a major role in the new landing burn sequence, which emphasizes redundancy by keeping five engines active during critical phases rather than dropping directly from 13 to 3. Internal improvements will support these external changes. For example, the V3 booster will feature a redesigned fuel transfer tube, similar in size to Falcon 9's, to better support the demands of Raptor 3. With these upgrades, the V3 system is expected to deliver payloads of up to 100 tons into orbit as early as next year, all while maintaining the goal of full reusability. Flight 10's data has therefore given SpaceX the confidence to accelerate these changes. The fact that the booster demonstrated greater than expected stability suggests that the V3 booster can safely push beyond the limits that were initially predicted. Of course, technical success is only half the story. SpaceX must also focus on speed. Musk has repeatedly highlighted the importance of rapid production and reuse. He has spoken about launching up to 10 Starship tankers per day during Mars campaigns, reflying super heavy boosters every hour, and launching Starships daily, and achieving these ambitious goals requires not only successful flights, but also a production and testing system that can keep pace. That said, at the moment, speed remains a challenge. B-18 has been in line for stacking since May, but construction has only recently been completed, and it hasn't yet rolled out for testing. On the ship side, S-39 has not been stacked, and testing has faced delays. This slowdown raises concerns about meeting the launch cadence required for orbital refueling and eventually Mars missions. To overcome this, SpaceX needs to accelerate every part of the process. Production must operate at full capacity, and new assembly bays must be completed and brought online. Testing infrastructure, which has faced setbacks due to incidents like the S-36 explosion, must be upgraded for V3 requirements and ready for immediate use. Launch sites must also expand, with Pad 2 becoming operational soon to support static fire testing and upcoming V3 launches. These steps are not optional. The timeline for critical missions is closing in quickly. By late 2026, SpaceX is expected to conduct an uncrewed lunar landing demonstration in preparation for Artemis 3. That leaves only a short window in the second half of 2025 and throughout 2026 to refine Starship's design, as well as perfect reusability and build the launch frequency needed for such ambitious goals. So the question now is this. Can the breakthrough data from Flight 10 open the door to even greater successes with Flight 11 and the V3 booster? We will only know once the rocket lifts off, but for now, the outlook is brighter than ever. And with success already proven, the focus now turns to speed. Starship must not only succeed, it must fly often, be recovered quickly, and be turned around at a pace that matches SpaceX's long-term ambitions. A handful of successful missions is not enough. The system's purpose depends on rapid production, frequent launches, and unprecedented reuse. Next year, SpaceX faces the enormous challenge of in-orbit refilling. To fuel a single ship for deep space missions, 8 to 10 tanker launches may be required. Musk had repeatedly driven home the need for scale, describing a future where Starship could fly daily and super heavy hourly. These goals may sound extraordinary, yet they outline the cadence necessary for Mars and beyond. Reality, however, is lagging behind. Earlier Starship versions never reached a consistent flight rhythm, and the burden now falls on the V3 generation. Production tells the story. B-18 was stacked months ago, but remains incomplete, and testing has yet to begin. S-39 faces even greater delays, with no rollout in sight. Together, these setbacks slow preparations for the first V3 flights and threaten the overall launch cadence for the year. This is why the coming months are pivotal. Production must accelerate immediately, with assembly bays running continuously and new facilities brought online without delay. Testing capacity already strained since the S-36 incident must be restored and expanded to handle V3 hardware. On the launch side, Pad 2 is critical. It must support static fires and full missions, ensuring that the first V3 flight can still debut before the year's end. Starship has proven it can fly. 
now it must prove it can do so often, reliably, and with the utmost haste. With just over a year until humanity's next giant leaps, the pressure is immense. Success will depend not just on engineering breakthroughs, but on building an operation that moves with relentless urgency. And it can be said that every Starship flight carries with it layers of fascinating detail. Beyond the spectacular liftoffs, the visible triumphs, or the occasional setbacks we witness, SpaceX is also securing quieter victories that unfold behind the scenes. The treasure trove of onboard data from B-16 is one such example, offering insights that surpassed expectations and setting the stage for critical future upgrades. The true challenge now is how to optimize those hidden successes and transform them into even greater milestones. That is the central question, and the answer may soon come with the highly anticipated Flight 11, as well as the groundbreaking V3 missions that'll follow. These upcoming flights will not only test new systems, but also demonstrate whether the lessons from earlier attempts can be turned into a consistent and reliable path forward. Of course, this is still only the beginning of Starship's long journey toward the era of becoming a truly multiplanetary system. Many challenges remain and countless barriers still need to be broken. The scale of what SpaceX is attempting is unlike anything experienced before in the history of spaceflight. Each step forward will be more ambitious, more complex, and more demanding than the last. So now all we can do is wait and watch with anticipation. The next chapters in the Starship story are about to unfold and they will reveal just how far SpaceX can push the boundaries of exploration. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.